First, I'd like to uh, say I'll, I'll be as coherent as I can. If I say anything you don't agree with, that's just what it is, right? We don't agree. And I don't know exactly where we're going, but I'm going to start with some poems and then we'll just find our way. The Magic Valley, Childhood Distances, Hard to Remember What Was Never to Be Forgotten, Earth DNA Pulls, Genetic Memory, Ancient Spirit, Sky, Father Sky, The Magic Valley, Earth, Mother Earth, Predators Stalk, All Living Things. The death mask feeds on living essence. Feelings become fugitives. Emotions are cold alibis. When hurt, can't hurt anymore. Raged ones rise. Feeding the beast, all aggression is justified. And the beast grows. Flow of thought. Harnessed into mindset. A damning, diseased spirits, cannibals and vampires feast, mining minds in civilized ritual, the religion of business and machine, pay homage to technologic gods, at material altars, the mass prays a prayer of need and wanting more, what was never to be forgotten children of earth. What we see affects our realities. What is always to be remembered. The beast needs us to believe. Free our minds. Free the reality. We were born 18. If you think we're strange, you ought to see the others. We were born 18. In the middle of a Babylon dream. It's a crying shame is the maim of the game. Learning how to ride out the storm. What did we take? What did we steal? What did we keep? What did we waste? We wandered with neon eyes among broken lights. Out of sync fantasies, unbecoming to reality. Turning over images for others to see. What we can't face waits for us anyway, breathing down our necks these breaths of fire. We fought the cannibals, still nothing settled, with all these hungers to go around, masters of disguises, living double lives, hiding and smiling. We were born 18. Nothing we can do but conjure what we need. The work going on is the work going on is just more pyramids and slaves wasting lives to the royal flush. Nothing new happening here. Nothing new. We were born 18. If you think we're strange, you ought to see the others. We were born 18 in the middle of a Babylon dream. It's a crying shame is the maim of the game. Now, I think this is about DNA, descendant now ancestor, right? <laughs> so I want to talk about us, you know, and, and I want to preface this because I really am a little bit crazy, so whatever I got to say, if it's not safe for you, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it, all right? So, but we are human beings, us. See, sometimes I wander around in a reality and I kind of think I'm in a place and nobody knows who they are, they don't know where they are, and they don't understand what they're saying. They're making sounds and they've got words, but they don't truly understand what they're saying because it's not in synchronicity a great deal of the time to what they mean or what they feel. And I think any sense of any any sense of loss of power that we feel as, a, in, as individuals or society is connected to that, knowing who we are. So we go to this, we're human beings. 
We are human beings. That's who we are. And it's more than just a term or a phrase or a biological statement or something. We are human beings. That's who we are. And now we look at that. Who we are, human beings. Human is the, the visible. The visible visible is the human. The invisible visible is the being. Now the human, the DNA of the human, what we are, the bone, flesh, and blood is literally made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. So this is who we are. We are shapes of the earth. We are shapes of the earth. All of the things of the earth are made up of the same metals, minerals, and liquids, have the same DNA as we have. So we are all of the earth. So we're in, in, in a very real way, we are all related. Everything it really is, all my relations. Now the human, DNA, the metal, mineral, liquid of the earth, DNA of the earth that's in the shape of human bone, flesh, and blood has being. And we recognize that because in some, whether we know what we're saying or not, we still call ourselves human beings. Well, because we're made of the same thing that all the rest of the things are made of, then that means all of the rest of the things have being. So we are related in that kind of a way. Our real relationship to power and what really is power, not the illusion and the trickery and the sleight of mind, but our relationship to what is really power, what is real power is in our relationship to that DNA connection to the earth. Our power, our relationship to power is connected to our relationship to earth. And as human beings, because of this, what, what we have a commonality that because we no longer really remember we're human beings, so we don't really remember this. But the commonality is, is that we are all the descendants of tribes. At one time, we all come from tribes. In our beginning stories, in our beginning stories, we come from the tribes. Now, the more civilized the human beings have become, they have forgotten those be beginning stories, and they no longer understand that. See, so here's already a part of losing the identity about being a human being. Here's a, the, the loss of identity starts in, this ki in these kinds of ways. So what happened to the, the native people here on this hemisphere? And what happened to the blacks in Africa? See, it happened to the Europeans, too, because, see, at one time in their evolution, the, descend the tribes of Europe evolved into the descendants of the tribes of Europe, and it was in the process of evolving into the descendants of the tribes of Europe that they started to lose their identity. See, I think there's a, uh, a mining process. <laughs> it's, it's like two ways. In a way, it's like a disease. It's a disease that, that affects the spirit. I mean, the, dis the spirit gets diseased, and it affects the perception of the carrier of the disease, of the human carrying the disease, their perception of reality becomes distorted and altered because this disease feeds upon the spirit. So in one way, it's like that, but then in another way, it's like we're being mined. It's like we're being mined. The being part of human is being converted into a form of energy. They're taking our power as human beings. The being part is that relationship to power and mutating it through these refinement processes into forms of energy. I mean, this is what I think. So whatever peculiar or particular situation or difficulties we may be find our lives representing, the, it wasn't us. <laughs> it wasn't us. Famine in the plenty. Patience burns quick. Waiting for the rich. But the rich won't hurry. The rich eat us. So the rich don't worry. In the sun's shadow, water melts into cold. Running rivers of want. Want needs justice. But justice is just ice in those rivers of want. The stars in the night have seen it all. What isn't remembered takes time to weep. The soul isn't empty, yet it feels that way. All those stolen moments still searching to belong. The scent of heaven pulls the prayers of the prey. Feeling something missing 
is a constant of every day. Confusion in the happy place. The great lie is one with all the little lies. Edges of breaking dreams, cutting into other dreams. Waiting for the rich, but the rich won't hurry. The rich eat us, so the rich don't worry. Youth is a gift, the same with age. It's a continuing story, just a different page. Everything we would have done, just given the chance. Everything is to lose, everything is to gain. A part of the stars and other things we can't reach. The stillness of the night knows all of those forgotten memories. The times we wanted to keep couldn't understand our words, how we didn't know much about what we kept saying. Those passing by moments, carrying water under the bridge, giving safety to fires until the burn eternally burns. Tomorrow looks over our shoulder. Still, we can't see all that good. Yesterday saw the way it was, then laughed and cried into today. The learning part of living, what to win, what to lose, what to want, what to need, is in everything that happens. Now about this mining, we know, whether we think about it or not, we know that they can take, that we live in a technologic perception of reality that can take the DNA of the earth that is called uranium and take the uranium out of the earth and put it through a refinement process and mutate the power, the being part of that uranium into a form of energy to run an electrical system. We know that they can do this. And we know they can do it with fossil fuel. They can take old dinosaurs out of the ground, put them through a refinement process and turn them into a form of fuel to run electrical systems. But somehow we don't quite understand or consider the possibility, well, we're made of the same thing. We all have being. We come from the same reality. So maybe it is being done to us. Maybe the being part of human is being converted into a form, a mutation of power, energy, and then being channeled in the way that into author authoritarian aggressive authoritarian dominating systems. So the very being part of human is being converted into a form of energy to run these systems, to run that reality, to keep that reality intact. And the way they keep that reality intact is they, they, make, they try to make it real in our minds, that that's what's real. You know, it's like, and how, so how does mining take place? Like, you know, one way is like it's uh, through definition. It's always through definition. And it always takes place in the mind. Everything, everything that has ever happened to us in our lives, whether it was from an oppressor's point of view or whatever, it took place in our mind. It was done to influence our perception of reality, everything that ever happened. And we go back to that, that common time that we had, our tri that common collective tribal ancestry that lives in our genetic memory. We go back to that time. We all understood that the earth was our mother. We understood that all things had spirit. We understood these things then. They were a part, of, that was a part of our reality. So the earth was our mother. All things had spirit. And we were using today, we were borrowing today, we were borrowing the now from the tomorrow. So we had a, we had a responsibility to take care of today for tomorrow. So in our, in our ancestral memory, our perception of reality was based upon a spiritual perception of reality which translated into responsibility. We had responsibility. See, and then somewhere there appeared in time, there appeared this other thing which said, no, the earth is no longer the mother and the sun's no longer the father and the great spirit is no longer the creator. It's a human. <laughs> the creator has a human form and, thi and this human form creator owns all of it, owns it all. Now this is a completely, this is, you know, this is like Martians landing tomorrow, man. It really is. It's just a complete change of reality. So in our collective tribal ancestry, no one embraced it willingly. 
But the ones that carried this notion also knew how to make the weapons of war from the, metal, the metals and the minerals that they had taken from the earth. So they knew how to make weapons to kill. And they imposed it. So this became, so we went from living in a reality where the earth was the mother and, there was, and, and the father was whoever. It was the sun, it was the, sc the sky. But there was a larger creator that was spirit. And then this other reality comes in and says, no, the, cre the real creator is in the shape of a human. And then, and then it evolved, and eventually, how this, this creator in the shape of a human, it, through the millennia, kind of battled itself out to where it eventually became one man. <laughs> but at one time, there were many gods and goddesses, and this big thing went down. But it's at one point, through like them salmons jumping up that stream to survive, it ev eventually evolved into one. And it was a male dominator god. And the male dominator god perception of reality now said, hold it, it isn't about responsibility. Your life is not about responsibility. Your life is about submission. <laughs> you have to submit to me because I made it all. I own it all, and you submit to me through the ones I say, or to the ones who say that you submit to them for me. <laughs> Created religion. And religion evolved. But as a, mi as a mining Religious perception of reality was used to replace a spiritual perception of reality. See, because the, the spiritual perception of reality was one like where, well, life is a gift. So every time we were born, it was like an exchange of gifts. We were a gift given to a gift. It was an exchange of gifts. Every life that was ever born, it was about an exchange of gifts. And that was our reality. And all of a sudden, we got someone over here saying, no, you committed a moral sin. You are guilty for being here. This is major stuff. This isn't insignificant. This is major stuff because it affects our, rea our version. It affects how we see ourselves as soon as that seed gets planted in there. That virus, as soon as it gets in there, see, we never see as clearly again. Because we now are guilty for something just because someone told us we were. And then because we were guilty, we had to listen to them. You see, and that has absolutely nothing to do with responsibility. So this was a mining process. Women, <laughs> you're never ever going to get what is rightfully yours in this society as long as it lives at the expense of the earth because sexism was created when this change was made. See, sexism was really created as a mining tool. It wasn't really, I don't even think it was that much against the women. It was a mining tool because before they could attack the earth because the, the people considered the earth to be their mother so they took care of the earth and lived in balance with the earth and all of a sudden this new reality says, no, hold it, the earth is my property and man shall dominate it and convert it into material for me. These are, so sexism had to become one of the mining tools because of the way that people perceived the earth as the mother. So this is, where, this is why sexism came into play. It was to change and alter the reality of power that gave us life. And when they changed and altered the reality of power that gave, gave us life, here's what they sucked out of us. See, we, life eventually became traded. So people, think about it like this. How many people living in this life, how much of the time is spent just existing or surviving? <laughs> but it's not really about living. This is how they take it. So this was the guilt, sin, and blame aspect of this is what was used to keep people under this in, into this, in this type of a feeding position, keep people under control. Because, you know, we're not guilty. I mean, see, in the end, it boils down to we're responsible <laughs> or we're irresponsible. In the end, that's what it is. When it all balances out, we're responsible. We are responsible for what we do. We are responsible. It isn't about guilt, sin, and blame. It's about responsibility. But they have chased us. They have gotten us to chase ourselves into guilt, sin, and blame. All right? And, this is, and then we feel more and more disconnected from power about who we really are. It's like, in a way, the way the feeding goes, it's like if you... If you Ever had that experience where you think like, feel like something's missing from your life? <laughs> That's what it is. It's this, it's this thing eating. It's this thing eating. And now back to the human being. All right, so this is who we are. We're human beings. All right, well, another component of that, who we are. 
as a part of being a human being, we were not put here defenseless. See, we, we, were, we were given medicine and protection, all right, to protect us from anything that comes. And that, was, that is our intelligence. See, this is what we were given. We were given intelligence, see, the intelligence, and we all have it. We all have it. it, it may, every person's intelligence is unique to every, every person because we're all different, but we all have intelligence. And every doubt, fear, negative, dark, everything that ever eats at the wholeness of who we are, we use our intelligence. This is what's running this. Because it was put in our, these pictures were put into our intelligence. These concepts were put into our intelligence. And this is how that mining just kind of takes place. Because if a people do not trust themselves or like themselves or know who they are, then you can pretty much, pretty much do damn well what you please with them. And that's just reality. And they know that. Anyway, so our intelligence. Now we look at, as, as physical, as, as physical human beings, our relationship, our relationship to power, what we were given, it translates through our intelligence. Now we look at intelligence, I, to me at best I can see it, it's, it's like it's about imagination, it's our imagination, it's our creativity, it's our thoughts, and it's our manifestation. This is intelligence. As human beings, for our power and our relationship to power, probably next in the sexual power of procreation, to re because this is, this is basic, it is, these are maybe the two strongest powers we have, our intelligence right, and the need to continue. But we have been placed in a situation and a condition where we don't even understand ourselves in relationship to intelligence. And, and I say this not accusingly, I just say it observingly because we live within it. Look at, is the way the society that we live in now and the way that all, gets, all the business gets done, is this done intelligently? When you look at the way, the way we allow ourselves to be governed, you look at the way we allow the economics to be worked, you look at the way we treat the whole, the, this whole thing about age, you look at the way we treat all of these things. I see no intelligent behavior in there. I see, a lot, I see a, lot of, a lot of words that are structured to rationalize and pretend that it's okay, but I don't see, intel I don't see a pattern of what I call intelligent behavior. I mean, that's just me, right? I, but I don't see it. But we go to our intelligence and we look at, see, in a way it's like we create our own, we, we create our daily reality. You know, like, so if 40% of my day has is, is got to do with, do with whatever my insecurities may be or my fears may be, and 40% and of my day is dominated or affected by these things, then that's how I have been trained and programmed to use my intelligence. But I th when I really think about it, I think, well, hold it. If I just untrained and unprogrammed myself and just thought, well, hold it, when this, when this dark starts to come to get me, is to think in terms of, hold it, I can think differently. <laughs> and it's like to understand it's so accessible. If anything, any one of us in this room, anything that we do that we say that we do as a profession or because we enjoy doing it or whatever, we had to learn how to do it. And we made the decision to learn how to do it. So the same thing is here, we got, it's just a matter of making a decision. It's just a matter of making a decision. And it's, in some ways, it's the easiest decision to make because we don't have to pick anything up. We don't have to go externally. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to take instructions or lessons or anything. We just tap in and go in. We just go in. This, this genetic memory, this is, our relay, this is our link to our ancestral past. And we all have genetic memory within us because we live through our lineage, through our DNA and the reproductive so we carry within us the experience of everything that ever happened <laughs> through our DNA trail. You know, desc DNA, descendant, now ancestor. We are the descendants, now ancestors. See, so somewhere in whatever goes on in this world that we, that we are in now, this reality that we're in, this technologic reality, you know, it's, we need, it's in our best interest because we can do all of this we can, eat we can eat nothing but vegetables and we can do nothing but do it right. But if we don't do something with this, you know, then what's the point? You just get to stay healthier and alive longer in, an, in a nut situation. And try to convince, and convince yourself you're not one of the nuts. <laughs> no offense to anything, but 
But if we stick around without making something that's really meaningful, I mean, we have to deal with what we have to with the political systems and whatever. But, but there, this isn't, those are just mechanisms we go through. They control all that. That's still all old line, dark age controlling rules about how to, pr how, how to make change. See, so therefore nothing will ever change because nothing has changed. To the descendants of the tribes of Europe, the mining process, the mining process. All right. See, I don't have a time sequence, but pretty much what happened was there were all these, there were the tribes in Europe and then the Romans or somebody, the Greeks, or see, somebody came and then they, they started bringing these civilizations, right? And then they started having contacts with the different tribes. So at some point, back in the time of the Greeks to the Romans, they went, the tribes of Europe, Europe kind of basically went from being tribes to maybe, let's say, and I don't know what time this started. I, I don't remember when Rome was or the Greeks were, but it was before Christ. But by the time, say, a thousand years after Christ, see, the tribes, the descendants of the tribes of Europe, they no longer knew they were tribes because they were now peasants and serfs and owned by the land, and they were, just, they were property. Whoever owned the land owned them. And whoever owned the land had the right to do with them anything they wanted to do. The African experience to that came later. So did the native experience when they could get it to happen. See, but whoever owned the land, they could do what they want. So this was saved maybe by a thousand years. See, so, but yeah, by about a thousand years after Christ, this, is what, this was the situation of the, the descendants of the tribes of Europe. So now they're in this situation. Right? And, but they still pray the old way. See, they still believe in spirits. See, they still know that reality, spirit. So they still pray to spirits, and the women still have part of that role left with the, within the community yet because they still, their power is still recognized, that, that power representative of the, of the earth. See, so, all, so certain of these things were still living because they were still of the being part. So then about, I don't know, uh, 1100 or 1200 A.D., the church decided that it was God's authority on earth. <laughs> the church made the decision that it was God's government because the threat to the controls that the church wanted to have, right, was in the, that these people believed something else. See, they prayed to something else. They got, they got along with the church and stuff, but they prayed to something else. They prayed, they still went to the day of the dead. They still went to the ways of the spirit, the ways of their ancestors, you know, and, and the church did everything. Church did everything, you know, to start to change this. I mean, you know, Christmas, December 25th, Christmas, here, here's the deal on Christmas. Christmas was really the God, was the birth date of a Roman God, a Roman sun God, Mitha or something like that, all right, and the, and the Romans and them, had, the pagans at that time had been celebrating this guy's birthday, going way back into their memories, way back into their memories. They had been celebrating him. So at some point, about a thousand years or four hundred years after Christ, the church made the decision that this would be Christ's birthday. Because they, and, and what was the known civilized world at that time? This was this was a it was already a significant date for something else. Because anybody that really under, has an understanding of the Bible knows that Christ had to be born in the springtime and not in the middle of the winter because of the whatever the, the astrology is. See, so anyway, they just conveniently picked that. This is during that time they're waging that war against how the people prayed and how the people perceived reality. So they created the Inquisition, and the Inquisition was basically, if you thought differently than the church wanted you to think, you were guilty of heresy. You were an agent of the devil, you represented sin, and therefore you had to be destroyed. Now, but before you were destroyed, here's how it works, was you were accused, you were tortured, you were executed, and they took your property. And I figure in the course of the torturing part of all of this, they got new names, <laughs> right? And then you know, they just kind of, and the church took the property, and this went on for 400 years by the time Columbus got here went on 500 years in total, but by the time Columbus got here, so that 400 period, year period by the time Columbus got here, when Columbus got here, he said to the native people, who are you? And we said, we're the, we're the people, we're the human beings, and Columbus didn't understand what we were saying because he no longer, hit the descendants of the tribes of Europe no longer had a concept of what it really meant to be a human being anymore because they had just been brutalized and tortured for 20 generations just straight up to get them to change their perception of reality. So he, by the time they got here, they didn't get it. They didn't know what, a human, what it meant to be a human being in a relationship to life. All they knew was terror and fear. That's all that they knew. You know, so, so, in, so it was like that virus, you know, or that big earth mover. I don't know, but it got here. So in the course of all this, so in the course of all this, we end up where we are today. <laughs> There's a, a couple of things here I want to... See, I want to make this distinction because I think it's very important to us. 
the distinction between authority and power. See, the distinction between authority and power. I, I think that for us, we are, we are told that the more money we can accumulate, the more power, the more powerful we become. But in reality, the more money we can accumulate, the more access to authority it gives us. But that has, that's, not about, that's not power. It gives us ac access to authority. It tells the more, the bigger our guns or the more violent our military is willing to be or we're willing to be, the more powerful we become. But that's not true. That, again, is about accessibility to authority. It's about accessibility to authority. Political power? I don't think so. It's about accessibility to authority. To authority. See, because, I mean, because to me, I mean, <laughs> it's really pretty slick. Because, see, now, all right, so if I say, well, have more money I get, the more powerful I become, then that means, that means I will never, re I will never, never understand my relationship to power. I'll never understand about my essence, my spirit. I'll never understand about who I really am because I've been led to believe that these, uh, I've got to have these other things to have power. So, so it's a way of altering our rela relationship to even what it is we want. We're trying, we try to empower ourselves, but if we look at these other things, they are, a, it is authority. Authority is not power. Authority is authority. It can be sweet, it can be brutal, it can be violent, but it is authority. And that's all it is. It, in a way, if you could just visualize it, it's like a, it's like a machine. And our consciousness... And our spiritual reality is being converted into gasoline to run that machine. But that's all that it is. It is a machine, all right, because it cannot run without us. That's why it is not power. It cannot run without us. So it cannot be power. I am sorry, but it cannot be power. All right, it, whether, it does not matter the type of institution that it is. If it cannot run without us, then it is not power. It represents authority. And that's all that it will ever be. But if we do not have an understanding of that, we will be so far removed from the reality of whatever it is we want to achieve in our lives because we're, we're, chasing, we're running in the shadow of something that's not real. So, so it's like through definition and believe. I want to use, you know, I don't know how long I've been up here, so <laughs> I'm getting dry, so it's about time to go. But, but believe. See, some of the words, because like... Speaking a language, a languages that we don't understand. See, it's in here. It's like calling authority power. That's see. Then we don't know. We're we're keeping out of synchronicity. Believe is another one of these things because see, I have beliefs, or I, I think I have beliefs, <laughs> right? I'm not sure anymore. But I know I don't believe anything, <laughs> right? Either I know or I don't know. But I don't believe shit, and I really don't because I've seen that that's not maybe the most practical thing to do. So you trust, you know, you trust, right? Or you don't know and you don't trust. But believing is a very, it's like maybe in a way, it's almost like it's one of the magical words because it, it, because it can have so many meanings to it, you know, because to have beliefs, I, I know that in every culture and society, that's always been good because that's what we call the knowledge that's passed from the past. But at the same time, I look at the word believe, B-E-L-I-E, V-E, -E, so the heart of the word, the center of the word is the word lie. You know, I have a problem with that, you know, so, 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 so I mean, but, but it's in that word, it's in there, so it means something, it truly means something, otherwise it wouldn't be in that word. This is, because words really, I mean, re in reality, words are thoughts and feelings that are sent out into the vibratory world. It's like tossing a stone into a pond, there's going to be a ripple, so, so something is happening. But if we're just chattering and don't, under, don't understand what we're chattering, then, then we're not going to understand a lot of things because all them stones we keep tossing out there keep sending them ripples back to us. But we don't understand that it's rippling. Well, way back to believe. So, so I think maybe it's better to think more and believe less. Instead of saying, I believe, maybe it's better to say, I think. <laughs> you know, and it's not subtle. To me, it's covert. It's major. Because at what point do, do we start to believe something and then we no longer think about it because we don't have to because we believe it now? Or even when we're, even when we're thinking about what we believe, we're, we're limited by the definitions of the belief itself. So we're not. We're just fooling ourselves. You know, 
We're just fooling ourselves. Well, because we're, we're not looking beyond the limitations. See, so I think, so beliefs, I think, are something that should be very carefully handled. And, and to just believe, I think it's better to think. I, I, I do, because think represents to me about the fulfilling the responsibility of having an intelligence and activating it. So I think, think, so I think thinking does that. And thinking means we're active, we're participating. Believing means we're passive and we're waiting. It's kind of like, like hoping, you know, and I don't mean anybody named Hope. I have, I, I'm not meaning anything, right? <laughs> but hope, because this is another word that gets used a lot, but it's one of them passive words again. You know, maybe we should pray more and hope less. And hope, now, <laughs> like believe, see, one of them tricky words <laughs> again, because hope, I remember I was nine or ten years old, and I was in a square room somewhere being colonized, and they told me about the Greek gods and the mythology of the Greek gods, and they said, well, you know, the gods had all these, they had this box of the seven evils of the world, and all the evils of the world were in this box, so they gave it to Pandora and told Pandora, don't open the box, because that's the box of evil, so don't open the box. Pandora opened the box because she didn't know what the box, she didn't know what evil was, uh, kind of like Eve eating the apple, I think, right? That transition, sexism turning, I think. But anyway, so Pandora... So Pandora opened a box and the seven evils of the world came out and then they said, but then they said, oh, hold it. But hope came out also. The eighth thing came out. Hope came out so that we could help cope or deal with the evil. When I was nine or ten years old, but it, may, it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> well, this is a box of evil and hope came out. How come hope doesn't have its own damn box? You know what I mean? It's just simple, it's a simple reality to me. You know? And I know, I mean, I, I noticed it. I know I could, uh, that was... Just a little bit. See, so, so maybe we should pray more and hope less. Because, again, it's about participating within our own reality and within our own consciousness and our own lives. Because, because that's where a great deal of it has to take place, the participating. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more and then, then I'm going to be tired. Crossing the dark side. Playing me through time. Wetting my edge, I painted myself in what I've done. Sowing the night. Seeds of ideas, tending thoughts I wanted to harvest. Riding the dry, the sun was my fever. Then I got lost in the thirst. Somewhere in time and youth, I used to know someone's, but they sort of disappeared. Along with some others, I never got to mourn. Depending on who's dealing and what the, depending on who's dealing and what the deal is, have to watch what I say. It's what's used to hunt and track me down. Maybe the years buried what I couldn't carry. The reality of the bait is the nature of the trap, and what I couldn't carry waits for me anyway. Waiting to be sprung. I'm just a spectator here. Times of transcending time. I should have done what I could, but went and did what I would. Don't be playing games with me. That'll start me playing, too. The way shadows cross the line, I may have played more games than you. In the way angels kiss, we have this time around. Comes down to this, where we're going is how we're bound. The dormant violence of the subtle mind makes the cleanest cut the hardest cut to find. That part where anger alone can't keep its promises of revenge, it takes the dance with rage to put fire to that page. When the laughter and the living play it down, it plays out to the dying and the crying and whatever is left out. So our self-defense is our intelligence. It is our intelligence. We have to really, <laughs> we really have to, you know, because whatever it is within our own individual lives or collectively as a society, what's going to be given to the next ones, the next generation? What kind, we, we know we're, you know, we're going, to get, we're going to leave behind. I don't know what we're going to give them, but we're going to leave behind a political system that just eats on them, <laughs> you know, and an economic system that does the same thing. Every system we're leaving behind just eats on them. And no matter how you, you code it materially or whatever, that's still the reality of what. So somewhere in there, it's about an understanding of our intelligence and, our, and using our minds, <laughs> you know. 
somewhere it's an, it's an understanding of that about clarity and coherence. Because see, for us, I think it's like, I don't, number one is like, I don't think we should, we should ever judge ourselves, you know. I don't think we should uh, uh, judge ourselves. It's like, because going back to this thing here about, because I think it affects too many of us, this whole concept of the guilt, sin, and blame that was programmed into us to make us feel like we were lesser than we are. Because I don't, because once people get it, then it becomes very hard for them to shake it, you know, because they're afraid to, well, not believe in God, a lot of things, you know, not believe, <laughs> All right? Well, anyway, so a lot of fears there, so people don't really look at stuff as cleanly as they should. But in our, in our ancestral past, when we were born, see, we were given by the community that we knew we were given all, we were given all of the knowledge and information that the community had. So, uh, so uh, our mistakes were less. They were fewer. But see, we don't have that community to give us anything anymore. Very little knowledge given to us anymore that's about, about reality and keeping us real and helping us to be real. We don't get that knowledge anymore, and it's a much more predatory world because this predator eats our spirit. It doesn't just, you know, it's not like some saber tooth that just came and ate us, you know. This eats our spirit. Anyway, you know, so it's not, and so that the predatory nature of this one is how this one works. So the mistakes we make are going to be harder mistakes. See, but, but, every, but in reality, life is a continuum of experiences. And what we learn from the experiences says what life will be for us. That's the reality. Life is a continuum of experiences. It is an opportunity to learn from every experience, to gain knowledge. Not life is to gain knowledge, or life is to run from reality, but life is to gain knowledge. So everything that ever happens to us, we can learn from it. You know, and if we got a trail of stuff, well... You know, I don't really like that, you know, but I can't stop doing it, then just accept that reality. Well, I don't really like that, and I dislike it so much I can't do that anymore, right? Because this, the, the negative aspects, these are what usually people use to tear themselves down. You know, so to me, is is like we learn from everything, and when the deal is, and when it's too, and if some of it is too heavy for us, then if we're truly learning, then we find, we use our intelligence and our coherency, and we create another way to find our way. See, so everything is about us exercising our abilities, exercising our abilities. You know, and because guilt, sin, and blame, the trinity of the chain. Because no matter how we do it, because I would like to convey this idea, see, that no matter what it is that's going on, I'm talking about power and how power really is in relationship to us because all these things the fears frustrations the joyous moments any of it that's our power that's our relationship to power and our consciousness you know in reality is like is like power power generates power generates itself the more the more we seek to use our intelligence as intelligently intelligently and clearly and coherently as we can then the more we will be able to do that and the more other that it will just <laughs> it spreads. It spreads. It's like, if we, look at it this way, we're all drops of rain. All right? Every one of us is a drop of rain. And with enough drops of rain, the wind will show up, <laughs> right? And the thunder and the lightning, and you can make storm. Power. See, here's one thing told about power. See, it's about, because it's about our thinking. And all the years I, in the, well, in the time I spent politically active, I accumulated quite a few pages on, the, on this freedom of information thing. And one of the things I had to think about this when I found out just how insanely they had went about this, the, the enormity of what they were doing, it made me understand, see, I just know me, I'm, I'm messed up. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm okay and I'm kind of f***ed up and I'm all right and all this and I got all that stuff bouncing around. You know, and I got my ideals and the things I'm chasing through and that's me, I'm me. And here's these insane people, they got... You know, they got thousands of pages on me, right? <laughs> and it made me understand, yeah, I know, <laughs> and it made me understand they know they don't have power. It made, me, it made me get it. That's what made me really understand it. I'm just one person, right? With my own distorted perceptions of reality, I got my strengths and my weaknesses. I'm just one person. I didn't find the cure, the answer, anything. I just try to be coherent as much as I can, right? When I, or at least when necessary. All right. And then I see, oh, they've been spying on me and tracking me and all this. But all I did was talk or think. 
And that's when I understood. They know what I'm talking about. I figured it out. I mean, you know, they know what I'm talking about. We have power. We truly are the link to power, and it's in our thinking. See, I didn't really get it till then until they brought it home to my door. Then that's when I got it. This is really what it's about. You can hear about them going after people who talk too much of this that, but, but that's when I really understood. This, no, this is what the thing is all about. It's about our intelligence. It's about how we see and perceive reality. And if we can do it with clarity, you know, and to look at it like, so you look, when we look at what's going on, and what, see, what happens with the earth will happen with us. All right, so, so you have, you know, they needed, they needed, because in one, at one time we respected all of the life, so we respected all the animals, all the trees, everything, see, so, so they created race, uh, they created sex, uh, yeah, racism, <laughs> all right, to kind of deal with the animal thing, you know, the all living warm-blooded stuff, they kind of, right, so, so racism became the tool that sexism was in another way. They, well, I got lost, so. <laughs> my mama didn't bring me up. My mama didn't bring me into this world to let it eat me up. It might have beat me up, f***ed me up, but it didn't eat me up. It might have woke me up, sounds from the crack of dawn, Somewhere hanging from an angel's wing. Birth is terminal. And the ordeal is the happening in between. It might have shook me up. Memories of the future. Remember not too long ago, I was lost and running. Running without answers. Not looking for answers. Just lost and running. It might have messed me up. Living on the defense for offenses I committed. And I guess those times I don't care anymore are the most desperate or most selfish times I know. It might have tripped me up, breaking old promises to make new promises. And a dark side of good, sometimes trying, is an excuse or a mind game played just to keep a thing the same. It might have twisted me up, Times I wasn't responsible for what I did. Then come the times of consequence that I recognize as mine. And because I can still recognize, I know it hasn't used me up. My mama didn't bring me into this world to let it eat me up. It might have beat me up, fucked me up, but it didn't eat me up. So everything is about here. <laughs> Everybody has intelligence. Everybody has it. Sometimes we can use it to be smart. <laughs> All right? And we're going to put that limiter on it. That's fine. Right? We can use it to be intellectual. We can use it to be paranoid, insecure. We can use it for everything, see? Or we can use it in as intelligently as we can, as often as we can. But that's it. I mean, that's really for us. I mean, when I look at what's going... Again, but these are my perceptions of reality. But when I see what's happening, I think the best ride, the best way we got, is connected to us understanding that about ourselves. And I think in a part, and and, it, and if we're going to do this with our intelligence, we, I think that the real deal on it is we should always tell ourselves the truth. We should always tell, our, even if we can't tell anybody else, we should always tell ourselves the truth. Because if we can't do that then we aren't going to get any of the rest of it done either. Again, it's just a mind trip, and you might as, well, might as well be taking acid or heroin or something because I'm telling you, right, it's just a mind trip. We have to tell, uh, be real. If we can't be real with ourselves, if we won't be real with ourselves, then there will always be something real lacking from whatever it is we're trying to do. So that's what I mean. We don't judge, our, we just tell ourselves the truth. See, we know who we are. No rationalizations and self-justification. Tell ourselves the truth. Define reality. Our own defined reality. And the other thing, I'm going to read one poem, and I want to close out with this real quickly about, about democracy. Because I... I, I <laughs> we... I think... I, I think it's part of the mining process, the whole concept of democracy. So and it's about using our intelligence. Some place, at some point, 
someone has to start thinking about how to live with this planet. And I'm going to tell you, as a native person, see, democracy doesn't fly anywhere with me, all right? Because democracy did to me what Hitler did to the Jews. And there's no excusing it. You can't make it better. You can't make it. You can say whatever you want, but it doesn't change the reality. It does not change the reality. Democracy formed itself here. It called us the enemy. It's in the damn papers. It's in the founding papers. It's in the very beginning papers. It didn't apply to us because we were the enemy. So 200, and why were we the enemy? Because we were different, right? So well, let's, but I want to look at democracy because I am of the personal opinion it is your enemy also, all right? It was just more honest with me and then tried to lie to me after it hunted me down and made me become the smallest numerical number of people on my own land base. Then it told me I was no longer the enemy, but I'm sorry, it's too late. You are the enemy now, all right? And this is the reality, see? So, so they tell us now, participate. Vote, get your power there and participate in a majority rule system and we're the smallest numerical minority. You know, I'm sorry, <laughs> it doesn't make sense, this doesn't compute. I would be, what's intelligent about this? And this is the most stupid thing I ever heard, to tell us to vote now in this theoretical majority rule thing. All right, but to go to this, for every being, every, well, every person in this room, you go back to when it started. To understand the nature of this. It says it's about majority rule. But that's a lie. It's not about majority rule. And it never was. Right? Because, now let's go back and we look then. Let's go back and look in that period of the 1700s. If you were a woman, you were mentally inferior and you had no right to vote. Because you couldn't think. It was man's business. If you were black, you were a slave. And you were property, and you represented an extra vote for somebody. If they got enough, if they had enough of you, then you represented extra votes. But you had no say. And if you were a white male that did not own land, you had no value. You couldn't be taxed. You had no say. And if you were native, and incidentally, we were the majority, <laughs> we became the enemy immediately, and we had no say. See, so I think, so when you look at it, it it's the smallest numerical number of people on the hemisphere. They were the white male landowners. They decided that the smallest number of people here on this hemisphere decided majority rule. So I think it's really the smallest numerical number minority rule. And it's about class, it's about, it's economic rule, <laughs> right? That industrial ruling class. So as we sort out whatever our personal lives are, whether it's gonna be with our, our descendants, whether it's gonna be with our environment or any other thing, I think we really need to consider the options that maybe trying to save the democracy shouldn't be high on the list, you know, and trying to have a real understanding about what's going on should be a little higher on the list. You know, and this is not, I'm not trying to overthrow the, nothing, you know, I'm just trying to outlive it. So, and, and one of the things I'm starting to learn, a part of the outliving of this whole thing, is we got to live while we're alive sometimes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Because, I mean, be, staying alive and not living, you know, <laughs> what's that? So somehow we got to try to practice to live every day, you know, even if it's for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, I'm, I thank you all for uh, a therapy session. <laughs> Can't afford a psychiatrist every now and then we just get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the pigeons are tired of hearing it at <laughs> the park, so. I think about how I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm thinking. Shattering into shadow light, reflecting thoughts I can't relieve. My heart doesn't hurt anymore, but my soul does. Maybe that's what souls are for, to take the hurt the heart can't take. Distances, playing tag playing tricks with whatever it is I can't find. My weaknesses are my band-aids covering for how I don't bleed. And all the stones I threw, some were for flinging, some were for bringing, and some I never knew. Living painted into a picture, dripping off all those paintings, the colors of emotions, 
seeking any kind of devotions. Some things are private between me and the dead, and some of the rest is better off left unsaid. My heart doesn't hurt anymore, but my soul does. Maybe that's what souls are for, to take the hurt the heart can't take. So I, I thank you, and whatever was coherent, I'm glad that it was. And Whatever wasn't coherent, you just didn't hear it right. <laughs> so I thank you for your time. <laughs>